Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Homage web series. Thank you for joining us on our first ever live session, and today we'll be talking to Kim Fung Lim. Kim Fung is a breast cancer survivor that was recently diagnosed with breast cancer during the pandemic last year. During that time, she was also the sole carer for her elderly mother. Today, she's here to share more of her experience as a caregiver living with breast cancer and some of the tough decisions that she had to make along the way. Without further ado, let's hear from our anchor PC and her very special guest, Kim Fong. Thank you, Ryan Han. Uh, I'm so excited and also a bit nervous at the same time because it's our first time doing live. Um, but I think I'm more in awe that I have Kim Fong here with me. Um, so I just want to share a little bit um, when I first heard from Kim Fong that um, she was diagnosed with cancer. Um, I didn't know how to react. Um, I think because as a friend, a lot of times we just don't know how to react. Do we cry? Do we reach out to you? I somehow just don't know how to act normally. Um, and then later on, when I wanted to you know, invite her for this show, um, I asked her, oh, can I have a picture of you? And when she so courageously sent me the picture of her full makeup on and just without the headscarf, and I was like, wow, like just so wow. And I really don't know what to say. So um, thank you so much for making your first debut here with us. Um, mm -hmm. And thank you for being such an inspiration, especially to me at least. Thank you, Pusha. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Homish, for having me here. It is really a great honor, as this is also my first sharing session and my first live session. So, yes, I haven't seen you for so long, so yeah. it's so nice to see you. So, uh, I was diagnosed last year uh, when I was 39, and it was a big shock for me. Well, what happened was in April or end of April, uh, when I woke up, I found out that my right breast was actually swollen. Mm -hmm. It was swelled very badly. It was a big shock to me as it was painful. I was very worried. And during that time, it was the peak of the pandemic season. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to go. I was so scared to go to the hospital. But I went to the nearest hospital to get myself checked. And the doctor said that, it was okay. So he actually gave me the anti-swelling medication and the swell went off in five days. Also, oh, the first time you went to see the doctor, the doctor did not detect any... Uh, there was no further checking. So he okay. actually gave me the um, anti-swelling uh, medication first. Okay. So the swelling went off five days later, but the tumour was there. Oh. It was a very hot and big tumour. That, that time, it really scared me. But as like anyone else, you will actually think that it's nothing. Mm. It can't be that bad, right? So, but after one month, two months later, the tumor was still there. It got me really oh, worried. So, meaning you did not see the doctor even within that one to two months? No, because I think naturally, I, me, myself at least, right? I would think that it's nothing serious. It can't be me. I have no family mm. background or breast cancer. Mm. But after two months, something's just not right. Mm. So I actually went to my GP to check up. And then he immediately told me that this tumor is not normal, it's hot. Mm. So he actually gave me a referral and told me to see a breast surgeon immediately. So I quickly called the breast surgeon that he recommended and it was so full. So, and I told the nurse that this is actually quite urgent. So the nurse was really nice and scheduled me two weeks later. So I went to the breast surgeon two weeks later and got myself checked with the uh, mammogram, ultrasound. And after that, it was confirmed after the biopsy, it was confirmed a cancer. Honestly, when the doctor was actually explaining to me, I couldn't even capture anything that she said because I was still in the days like, this is serious, this is cancer. And that time she told me it was stage one. Uh, when I first met her, she told me it was stage one. After the biopsy, she told me it was stage two. And then that time it was at three centimeters. So she told me to actually have my surgery ASAP. And I scheduled it two weeks later. I didn't want, didn't want to postpone and I didn't want a second opinion because she was actually one of the best in the, in the, in the segment. So. 
Two weeks later, I had my surgery. And during the surgery, they actually do another biopsy on your lymph node to check whether there is any further spread to your cancer. And sadly, there was spread to my lymph nodes. I had to remove 23 of my lymph nodes, which six was actually with cancer. Mm. And within that short period from my uh, myosin membrane, from three centimeter, it grew to 4.5 centimeter. And it was really uh, aggressive. Uh, and because I was also diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, which is one of the most um, uh, aggressive cancer for breast cancer. So after the surgery, I was actually feeling good. It mm. wasn't that bad. Surgery is actually not that bad. So I actually asked my doctor, so what do I do next? So I would have to start my chemotherapy as soon as possible because it was so aggressive. So I started my first chemo. Uh, sadly, there was complication with my uh, surgery uh, recovery line. There was actually infection. Mm. So what happened was the infection took me more than a month to recover. But usually it would recover, you know, your wound will recover and everything will go well. But I think my uh, immune system was down. I had a acne on my surgery wound. So it went inside and the bacteria was in there. Oh. So that was really a very tough part for me because I couldn't even move to my third chemo after that. Mm. I had a one month break. I was admitted almost the whole month, off and on, in and out with antibiotics drips. And it didn't work, and I have to go through antibiotic uh, jab, mm. and that was so painful. And at that moment, I was feeling so down. I actually told my breast surgeon and my oncologist, "If this goes on anymore, I don't think I can fight further because it's only my second chemo, and mm. total I have to go through sixteen. How am I supposed to go through that?" But thankfully, with faith, with family and friends supporting, uh, it recovered. Mm. So I continued with all my chemo until my 16 chemo. Of course, in between, there was up and down to my uh, red blood cell, white blood cell started to go down. And there was also delays in between. But thankfully, everything went well. I finished my 16 chemo. I moved on to my 20 radiotherapy. And radiotherapy, it was smooth. It was so much easier than chemo. So I finished my, I completed my treatment last month. So yesterday was my one month anniversary out of treatment. And I was so happy because my blood test result came out. was so good mm. compared to the seven, eight months of all the blood test result. You know, when you see a blood test result, there was all, it's supposed to be hardly without any extra there, right? So when I was going through treatment, there were so many extra that scared me. So yesterday when I saw my result, I was so thankful and mm. so happy. Praise God. Yeah. So um, so since you've mentioned family, right, and I suppose that eight months of battle mm -hmm. is just so difficult because one, it's during pandemic. Um, two, I don't think you can get much support even if you want to and then you are internally battling with yourself so maybe if you can share with us um you know how was it like and especially if you know that you've got to care for your mom mm -hmm. um, and then yourself you you know you're, you're having your own battle so how do you you know juggle with that yes you're right actually during that period it was so difficult because it was the mco and this restriction of movement and also with my immune system down, I couldn't have much visitors. And then I was so worried about my mother, and I don't even know how to break the news to her. So I actually hid it from her for so many months, until my brother passed away in October, that I actually have to tell her the truth of everything. So to me, it was so important at that time, of course, to have your family's support. And I had a great partner who gave me the support emotionally and to take care of me and my friends. And also to have a good caretaker that you could actually rely on. So to me, uh, at that point, my mom was actually at a care home. Mm. So at least the first thing is to care for myself first because if I'm not okay, I can't even care for my mom emotionally or mentally or physically, you see? Mm. 
So to me is to care for myself. Uh, I was actually staying on my own off and on. So at that point, right, I actually knew that if I couldn't take care of myself, um, I would actually engage a caretaker professional tech like home age because you have care system, you see. So to me, is that was already an option on my side if anything's happened. Mm. And then in case my mom needs further care, that was another option that I would actually send a caretaker to her to see what her needs like. Mm. So that was the option available and it actually uh, made me feel more secure that I could, you know, uh, at ease and go through my treatment. So then um, I actually have got two questions. Mm -hmm. One is that um, because I think we are all brought up in a way that we don't want to send our parents to a nursing home. So I think that's the first one. Um, how do you feel as a child to, mm -hmm. to go through that? Um, so that's the first. And then the second one is just more of how do I as a friend, mm -hmm. um, you know, give you the support, um, you know, without me maybe breaking down right now yes or... correct so for your first question it's actually never easy to send your parents or anyone your family to a home care but everyone got to understand the home care system now is different from ages ago mm -hmm. is actually amazing facility amazing caregiver that are qualified nurses and uh, even doctor visitations and things like that so the mentality got to change that we are trying to give the best to the family members that we love. Mm -hmm. Imagine that during my cancer treatment period, my mom was with me. I think I would be battling whether to take care of myself or take care of her. Or maybe we both will get into depression and probably look at <laughs> each other that we will actually both give up mm -hmm. because I'm not at the best uh, mental state of mind and the best physical uh, state and she's not too and like what you say even as a friend or family she will look at me like feeling helpless like what she's going to do with me looking at me like this mm -hmm. every day because there are days that i couldn't even get up from bed i don't even know what to tell people yeah no. i think and i think earlier on when you were saying even on your second chemo you it was just so painful and you wanted to give up mm -hmm. imagine a parent having to hear that right. from you and yes yeah so i think nobody would want to see a the child to go before her yes so on your second question why did i kept it quiet and continue to you know update my social media like i'm just living like normal is actually first i do not want to worry my family and friends around me people around me secondly i could still cope mm -hmm. and thirdly i did not want because first thing to me is always to trust your doctors okay they have the uh, best intention for you. I did not want too much opinions. I just want to concentrate on what they actually advised me. So uh, thankfully, I have amazing friends and family who knows the boundaries of how to approach me. When they can't actually see me, they will actually just ask me, how am I doing, things like that, but not over push it, you see. And then when they could visit me, they just give me a quick visit. And then they would just act like normal, just smile, you know, things like that, and not give me pitiness. I think mm. as a cancer patient, it's very important that we do not want pitiness, okay? And then, just like you, you were amazing. You sent me a book to read. Mm. So that was so good because at that point during treatment, right, I couldn't do much. It's not that because uh, I'm lazy or things like that, but my, my doctor said, this is your break time. You watch as much TV as you want. Do some reading when you can. Just do some light exercises when you can, but do not over push yourself. You are not at the normal healthy stage. You need to rest. Mm -hmm. So what I would advise friends and family, you know, to deal with your cancer family or friends is that um, do not pity, give pityness. Care is, and pity is very important. Do not give too much opinion that is not studied. Uh, I think need to respect uh, the decision of the patient and need to believe in the doctors that we chose, that doctors are giving best um, option to us. Because I know that you know family and friends, sometimes they care too much. They will tell you about uh, alternative treatments mm. and also this and not and whatnot. It actually confused the patients a lot because we are already in the state of mind that we have so much fear 
we don't even know whether we can battle this, whether we can survive. Mm. And with all the options, right, it actually even scares us even more. So for me, I was very thankful that um, I really know what I want. I just want to listen to my doctors. Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so we just want to let you know that this is also a live session. If you mm. do have any questions at all, anything you want to ask him for, please feel free to just uh, put it in the comments um, and then yeah, we'll try to um, address them. Correct. Okay. Mm. Um, so then maybe let's just get back to also um, during uh, your battle. Um, mm. It was eight months long. Correct. Um, then when you finally told your parent, how did she um, accept um, you know, mm. the, the news? Um, so, so what happened was uh, I actually got myself bored pretty early, like before my second chemo because the hair was falling so much, I really got myself bored. So when I actually see her, I was in my headscarf. Mm. So I was trying to test it and see what was her reaction. So after many times of seeing her, she did not ask me. But did you think that she suspects something? Yes, I think my mom is a very smart lady. She always knew something was not right. But I think as a mother, she doesn't know how to ask me what's wrong with me. Yeah. Or she probably doesn't want to face the reality that something bad happened to me. So in the end, I actually sat her down. I actually asked her that, do you know that? Something is not right with me. She mm. just look at me quietly. So I break the news to her that I told her that um, I am diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer, but I am okay. Mm. I told her, look at me. I, I don't look like someone who says just that, I mean, my head scarf, I'm bored, but look at me, I am okay. So she had tears in her eyes. Yeah. It wasn't easy because she's, she's at the age at 70s. Okay, I am the only daughter left, uh, only child left. So it wasn't an easy time for me and for her too. Because mm. my brother passed away in October when I was battling it and I was in hospital so much. Mm. So I don't even know what I should be handling first. Herself, myself. Mm. Um, sorry, things like that. So yeah, it was an easy time, but I was very thankful. My mom was always a very strong person. Mm -hmm. Even when she received the news about my brother passing away, she was strong enough to to not really break down and went crazy. But I think for my end, I was going through a lot of ups and downs because after my brother passed away, I was having this fear. Mm -hmm. He was so young. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether you be like it or not, it plays with our mind, you see. And even in that period, I was admitted for anxiety attack. I couldn't breathe. Mm. So doctor actually told me that I need to relax. But to doctor, you know, it kind of like I can't control my brain. So luckily, um, as I said, with support, the support system that, that you have, I talk it out. That's why I always believe in talking it out. Mm. So when I let it out, at least I kind of let it go. Mm. So I was very blessed that my mom took it quite well. So what I would actually advise, it's actually never easy to break it to your family, is do it slowly. Mm. Do it slowly. Don't don't try to test and see what's their reaction, you know. Try to, to be that's like what you say, say, right? Handle it on your own first because we are adults. Try to handle ourselves first. Take care of our surroundings and everything first before breaking into them and handling them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of lost my train of thought because, <laughs> I, because I was so... Um, I, I guess, yeah, um, it, it's difficult, but I think... Uh, moms or parents they they generally try to keep it cool mm -hmm. you know um, because i think um is it a woman? God, yeah. <laughs> i don't know but i think yeah they, they will always put up a front as well mm -hmm. um i think also whether our parents they like to be in nursing homes or not but if knowing that 
my child is also having their mm-hmm. own battles, um, I would not also be a burden to them. So I think um, there's just a lot of dignity, mm-hmm. you know, um, in seniors as they grow old as Correct, well. Yes. And I think even for yourself, um, when you say that, you know, I don't want any PT because it's not what I want. Mm-hmm. I have my own battle. I can go through it. So right. I think it's just a lot of dignity, a lot of courage that you have. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm always so inspired and I, I was trying to keep, you, keep myself you. cool here. <laughs> so uh, coming back to the um, caring for my mother, right? So so explain to my mother with my condition that not that I do not want to bring her home, but at this stage, mm. Uh, I have to take care of myself and I will give you the best home care and everything. That's why people got to open up their mind. Home care is very different from um, many years ago. They have the best state of facilities, just like a hotel with nurses mm-hmm. and caregivers and uh, doctors' visitations. And even if um, parents are at home, uh, it's not like before that you actually hired a maid to take care of your parents. You have special uh, professional cats that can take care of your parents, whether it's stay in, hourly, or things like that, that cater to your needs. Mm-hmm. So I guess with all this help, it actually is, at least myself, a lot of people out there of the options to take care of their parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see if we have got any mm-hmm. questions from the audience. Uh, thanks here. Thanks, Kim Fo, for sharing straight from your heart. What was the one thing that kept you going throughout your chemo sessions while giving care for your parent at the same time? You know, this morning I was reading through my uh, diary of my uh, journey and I read one of the uh, days I actually wrote that, I think it was my first or second chemo, that uh, I have to fight through because I want to leave. At that point, I realized, right, it, when you have something to fight, like, I don't want to leave my mom, I don't want to leave my partner, I don't want to leave my nephews, mm. and I still have so much things that I want to do, mm. okay? This is not enough, but of course, if God wants to take me over, it's a different story, but I still want to fight, there's still so many things I want to do, so many things I want to give back to society. So that actually triggers me, right? I still want to fight, I want to leave and I want to do more. Yeah, so it's very important to actually have uh, what you say, uh, something more that you want to leave for. So in case just, for example, I don't have a family, I'm alone and things like that. Even with that, I told myself, there's still so much more I want to do. And if I survive, there's still so much more I can give back to the society. Wow. Uh, okay. Is there any more questions mm-hmm. that we have? Oh, you're an inspiration. Thank you. Folks. Thank you. Stay strong because you are loved. I think all of us are very strong, just that we don't know it. But when we actually are faced with obstacles and things like that, I think naturally we just push ourselves to be strong and battle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, and especially to find out about um, this C word, right? Mm-hmm. I think earlier on you mentioned that um, the first one was you couldn't accept. It's like, why me? And it's impossible. So I think you've also shared with me that um, you have had a healthy lifestyle, but then after that, you got into work. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if you were healthy uh, earlier on, but you know, the moment at that moment when you have got a lot of stress and work, so maybe you just walk us through maybe that, that part where you were healthy and then how you got into the whole. Okay. So, uh, Two years back, before that, I was um, very healthy. I actually eat quite clean, okay? And I do a lot of exercise. I like to do body combats, I like to go hiking, and I like to do running. So it was like a weekly affair that Mm -hmm. it was so consistent. And then uh, work became more stressful, and then I became unhappy. So like what she said, it's not because all this while you have been healthy, you are secure that it will mm-hmm. never happen to you. I think that was actually running behind my head that thinking, you know, it would happen to me. You know, I have been so healthy. I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke. So I was like, I should be safe, what? Family no history or so what? But like what my doctor actually told me, when you are unhappy, 
you are stressed, your body actually triggers your cell to mm. the cancer cell because everyone has cancer cells in them. So it actually triggers your cancer cell like, hey, time to attack you. Mm. So it was like that because with the cancer um, uh, in me, it couldn't have happened like two days ago or two years ago. With the size it was, the tumor, it would have been in my body more than five years ago. Mm -hmm. But what I would strongly say that my healthy lifestyle, my exercise, actually helped to suppress it. Uh, yes, okay. I guess because you when you run, like mm -hmm. you are very active, right? Mm -hmm. When you exercise and when you're hyper, your happy cells, what do you call your happy Cells. Uh, and, and yes, exactly. <laughs> so that actually goes up. So it actually suppresses your cancer cell. That's what I believe in. So the same advice from a doctor. Be happy. Enjoy your life. Do what you want. So what is not happy, eliminate and put it aside as much as you can. Try to control it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, do we have any more questions? So what you are doing is so amazing. Continue your exercise because you are so active. Yeah. So that's what I'm starting uh, now to. I started to do my body combat at home again. Oh, nice. Yes, because before this, I really have no strength at all. So mm -hmm. now I started my last meals online. So I do my body combat online. So I want to be like what I was before. So for me, it's always not challenging others but challenging myself mm. yes mm -hmm. um i actually before we answered that mm -hmm. question um okay maybe. um kim fong you are so inspirational and strong uh, thank you so much for sharing do you view life differently now how your priorities have changed compared to before that's a very good question honestly yes my perspective in life has definitely changed uh, before this, I was more into work, 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 making excuses. Everything is about work. There's no time for anything, even for my family. So for now, things change. It's about me first, my family, and then work. So that's never a, I will never believe in work-life balance. I believe in work-life integration. So to find a job that you feel that what I feel that I can give back to society. Even from before, I always feel that a company should not always be all about profit. It should be about giving back to people, to the society, to the planet, right? So yes, this definitely changed my perspective in life. So what I would do moving forward, whether my life, my job, it will always be what I believe in before to give back to people in the society. But this time, I'm going to aim on doing that before it's different. I would think that, you know, I'll find a job that gave me the package, you know, uh -huh. I go for it first and I climb my way up and things like that. But this time I will look at it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I have probably just want to share a little mm -hmm. bit also because it just occurred to me that you were in the school band. You were in the yes, school band. Yeah. You know? And I, I guess that's where we got the, you got the tenacity mm -hmm. from the, the discipline, you know, oh, yes. because we've been like marching under the Thinking sun. Thinking back of yeah. that, right? We started at five something in the morning and see you like the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, um, may maybe, um, let's see, we've got about half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if there is this one thing you want to tell um, people out there, whether um, if they're battling with anything at all, uh, what would that advice be? Um, like I say, first thing when we are battling with anything, right? For example, sickness. First thing is to get ourselves checked up. Okay, I will relate back to breast cancer. It's very important to have um, self checking, mm -hmm. going for our annual checkup, and then once we have all that done, do not avoid it. So a lot of people when they actually have their test results and everything, right? They know it's bad, but I put it aside. You see, mm -hmm. so what we should do is continue, get the report and continue the consultation and get it solved, not full stop after checking. So, uh, for example, I give back the uh, example on myself. I actually did self-checking and also checked by my GP. Mm -hmm. But what happened was my tumour was um, 
not near to the breast side, but nearer to my armpit side. So it was above, it was hidden up there. Oh, okay. So I guess when GP check you, right, they don't really check above, mm. yeah, below your armpit, right? And then I was 39, which normally we are advised to do membrane at 40. But I guess uh, another thing we could do is also when you do your blood test, do ask for a cancer marker test. Mm. So that will actually help you to check whether yeah. any trigger or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened is always have a healthy lifestyle, a balanced lifestyle. As much as we all, not everyone loves to exercise the heat and the sweat and things like that, but I think maybe half an hour exercise a day of any kind of movement is good enough. And now I am trying to eat less meat. Mm -hmm. uh, not because my doctor actually advised me to, on any diets, but I feel that it would actually better cleanse my body, okay? And try to be as happy as much as I can, do what I like to do, not wait until tomorrow, because I think all of us, we have a wish list, yeah. okay? And then we say that um, later, la, tomorrow, next year, la, not free, la, okay, work, la, okay, now pandemic, la. <laughs> so I believe when we can, we should do what we want to do. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Wow, that is that's a very good advice. <laughs> I'll make sure that I look at your wish yeah, list now. Do, do not postpone anything. Yes, correct. Um, do we have any mm. more questions? Uh, Sarah, thank you for sharing Kim Fong. Uh, whilst giving care to your parents and also caring for your own self, how do you juggle that time to know when to prioritize care for yourself and when to provide care for mm -hmm. her? Uh, good question, because at that time when I was very down, I have to say the priority was for myself is good thing that I have my aunts and uncles, relatives around me, and then also a good caretaker. So I could rest and take care of myself as so the priority will be myself because if I am not well, no matter how I go and see my mom, I will probably spread some germs to her or herself to me because your immune, my immune system was down. So priority, I always believe to care for ourselves, okay? And then when we feel okay and there's an urgency, uh, then I go and see my mom. I have to prioritize it like that. She, If she calls me often, I can't run to her all the time. I have to tell myself that I have to accept it myself. It was difficult for me when my mom called me and I can't see her. Mm. Okay, But I have to tell myself, my immune system is down. If any germs comes to me, I probably don't need to see her anymore the mm. end. So, uh, yes. Us, ourselves first, and then for the people that we care for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, mm. I I I don't know how I'm feeling because I think at the same time, um, I'm, I'm I'm so happy that you know mm. you came out victoriously, you know, the, Thank you. Uh, out of this mm. battle. Um, it's definitely not easy, and I hope uh mom aunt mm. is um, um better. Um, and I hope that um knowing that you have fought so well and came out victoriously from you know this battle, um she knows that she has brought you up well because you know I have your to, state of honestly, mind was just so I really have to thank my mom because my mom is a very strong woman. Okay. So I guess I get some of the genes from her. <laughs> okay, so the 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 stubbornness from her that do not want to give up. Mm. So yes, and from school bands and <laughs> I guess you know you know in school we have a bunch of us that are very tough yeah you see so this upbringing was actually um i'm very thankful for that yeah mm -hmm. yeah actually you're right i think um it's nurture mm -hmm. um, at the same time i think it's also nature correct mm -hmm. okay uh last um okay melanie chan great sharing kim fong um did you encounter anything or anyone special during all those times you spent in the hospital? Oh, I am very fortunate uh, when I was in the hospital. So often I had amazing doctors, amazing nurses, and um, I'm more of a friendly and talkative person now. So during chemo, you know, you're there for 16 times and at hospital most of the days. 
I met many new uh, nurse friends. I met quite a few of chemo friends. And when, was, and when I was admitted, even my breast surgeon brought me to see other patients, to mm. talk to them. So, yes, I met lots of amazing fighters and warriors. Because before this, I actually never met any breast cancer patients. Mm, mm, mm. Then I realized there are so many of us, even my, some of my close friends, mm. that actually never spoke to me about it when we were having it at the same time. Oh, you see, this is something that I realized people don't want to talk about because she told me that she was worried that I got worried, and I told her the same thing. I didn't want to tell you because I was worried that you were worried. Mm -hmm. We are having it a few months Just about apart. the same time wow. at the same diagnosis. Wow, okay. exactly. So, do you think that, um, no, if you knew that a friend of yours who is also going through the same stage, mm -hmm. um, the encouragement from one another would have helped you uh, recover a lot faster? Maybe? Yes, because uh, one thing we all realise is when we try to talk to non-cancer patients, uh, it's actually very tough for both parties. Mm. It's difficult for us to tell uh, the other party how we actually feel when we don't even know actually how we feel. And we can't blame the other party of not knowing how to care for us or knowing exactly how we feel. So if we have like cancer friends or cancer patients who actually went through it and also going through it together, we actually kind of comfort each other. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, another thing, uh, when I was diagnosed after my surgery, my breast surgeon actually sent the Breast Cancer Welfare Association person to see me. Mm. Yes, to com com comfort me and to tell me that she's also a survivor and it's okay. But when she saw me after the surgery, she told me, you'll be fine. I said, what? You're already eating like nothing <laughs> happened. And I said, I'm very thankful that the surgery went well. It wasn't that painful. Mm -hmm. So I love to eat. So I was just, I woke up and I was just eating when she visited me. So yes, if we could, you know, open up to talk open up to us around even with the chemo patients around me talk to them because they are feeling exactly how we feel mm. fear don't even know whether where to talk to you but when you start talking you have this special connection that we understand each other and how to console each other mm -hmm. yeah mm. i suddenly have this bizarre idea yeah. that you know maybe you can um Maybe he visit some of our cancer can cancer care recipients. Of course, where, you know, I can just yeah. Because I think just knowing that there's someone out there who has you know won yes. the battle, um, I think it would encourage them a lot. Yes, and also because uh, there were so many side effects during chemotherapy, I had the same fear which I'm very sure new cancer patients had to. Oh, uh, is this side effect is okay? Uh? Is it normal? It's like the backache is so bad that we question ourselves, is this normal? Then we have like fatigue, like really bad fatigue. Even I have nose bleeding that I asked my doctor, are you sure it's normal? I kept having nose bleed all the time and even, you know, fingers, black fingers. So if we could actually advise patients in advance, just like what BCWA did for me, it would actually calm the patient down more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I always, luckily, I had a group of cancer friends. So I asked them, "Is this normal?" I'm telling them, "She said it's normal." My my hands started to ache so badly, uh, because of neural issues after the chemo. Then they told me it's normal. So I get more secure, like okay, it's normal. Then I get like very bad cold sweat at night until one point that like, my sheets was actually drenched. Mm -hmm. It was so bad that I got like feel like is this normal? Then they told me it's normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I even actually uh, two days ago I actually registered under BCWA to be a volunteer uh, counselor. So I will be going for my um, classes 
next month for it. Nice, mm. nice. So BCWA is Breast Cancer Welfare Association. Okay. Mm. Okay, nice. So then it's just a hotline that they call to ask for help. Uh, yes. Uh, they have Facebook, Instagram. There's also a hotline to call okay. in case you want any counseling or things like that. Mm. Mm. Okay, great. Mm. Uh, is there any more questions? Uh, Nisha Andrea, uh, thank you so much for sharing your life story, Kim Fo. You are definitely an inspiration to all women out mm. there. Uh, Kim Fo, what did you do to navigate your emotions? How long did it take you to build up your confidence? Very good question on emotions. I might seem happy and positive now, but there is always downtime. I had my time when I wanted to give up too. I had my time that I cried so much that the feeling was like I told my partner. Now I told him that I actually understand what it feels like sleeping on the bed and waiting to die. I actually told him that it was so bad that I was in bed for three days. I couldn't eat. I couldn't move. That I told him, what am I doing here? It just affects your brain so much that kind of like, I just want to give up. It's that he told me that it's okay to feel down, it's okay to tell up, talk up, cry out, but there have to be a time limit. You can't do this forever. So you cry out, shout out, anything you want, your downtime, but there has to be a food stop. So I learned from that. I can't be down all the time. I give myself break time to cry, but just a few minutes. Now I have to tell myself, enough, okay? Go and find something to do, pray, read something, watch a comedy, things like that, and count my blessings. Mm. So I learned before my sleep, I thank God for another day of a smooth battle. Mm. I wake up, I thank God for another day to see the sun again, you know, to breathe. So it actually changed my perspective too on how much I appreciate life even more. And yes, that's how I navigate my emotions. I give myself a cut of time. So how long does it take? It is actually a continuous thing to, to get back my emotions back to normal and also my confidence. Like what I was telling PC earlier, how did I get my confidence to take off my head scarf? Oh, actually it was because my head scarf started to itch. <laughs> The hair was starting to grow back and it was starting to itch that I couldn't stand it. And then because uh, the one of the effect of chemo is you get like premenopausal symptoms like hot flushes. So a bit of temperature change in the room, I will start to sweat. So I told myself if, you know, um, cancer um, people like people who actually advocate cancer, they could shave off their hair and feel proud. Okay, even actresses shave off their hair and they still feel proud working out. So as a cancer patient that we are battling through and being a warrior, why should we feel shy working out, being bold or, or without a head scar? We should feel proud because every day that we battle through it, we actually went a step further and we are all a warrior. Hair will start to grow back, even though it's slow, but it will start to grow back. It's okay. It's just part of us. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I can get somebody else to take over for mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it's true about just be grateful that we have another day. Yes, yes, honestly. Because um, three, three years ago, I nearly died of anaphylaxis attack at the roadside, you see? And that also woke me up. So when I got this cancer, like, you know what you say, people, even myself will ask the first question, why me? Mm. Uh, but amazingly, my doctor told me the first time I saw her, don't ever ask yourself why me because <laughs> no one could answer you. Even she couldn't answer me, mm. only God knows, okay? Mm. So that I could decide. I don't want to ask why me and torture myself. So, but for me, it's even more amazing because I nearly died three years ago. So this was already an amazing chance by God given to me. So there's no more why me. So it's all about you gave chance to me that I could still heal myself. 
I have amazing doctors, I have amazing medical around me, so fight. I shouldn't give up this chance that was given by God. Mm. Because mm. it would be a waste of his power, his generosity to give me another day to fight through everything. So if I give up, that would be something like committing suicide mm. in a way. Mm. So never give up, never give up the chance of being able to fight. Yes. Mm. You're just so amazing, Kimpo. I think every one of us are just that we don't know it yet until things come in front of us and we will all have a natural instinct to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, okay. Hannah, uh, so much love for you, Kim mm. Fo. Thank you. And that you're cancer free. What are you looking forward to doing most in the future? Honestly, I started to have a list. I started, uh, you know, messaging friends and um, in other countries, okay, in other states that I started to put down a list. And when I can start traveling, I'll be traveling all these places to meet all my friends without any excuses, yeah. okay? And like what I said earlier, the first thing that I have started to do is exercise. I want to be like what I was before, very active in running because running gives me a freedom because last time when I run is because it set my mind free. It gave me so much happiness. It clears my mind. So I want to build myself to that kind of uh, strength again and do my running and I want to start hiking again. Mm. Nice, mm. nice. Next time when we... Uh, when I think it's a little bit safer out there. Correct. We'll yes, we will do it together. together. Yes. Okay, I can't compete with you. If I'm going to ah. run with you, I think you better be walking. <laughs> that's, that's my running speed. <laughs> if anything at all, we'll just do it together. Okay, we'll walk together. Yes. <laughs> ah, oh my. <laughs> Any more questions do we have? Okay. If... Okay, uh, Debbie. Uh, such a power pack inspiration. Thanks a lot to come out and share your cancer journey. You are not alone. Thank you. We are all not alone. I think we, every one of us will have family and friends and even strangers around us that will be happy and uh, glad to assist and support each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think that is all the time we have yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And um, I think, um, at least from my end, mm -hmm. um, I've learned how to um, embrace or talk to somebody who is battling with anything at all, in this case, mm -hmm. cancer. Um, and I've also learned to make sure that I care for myself first before... I can even care for others. my, yes. yeah, my loved ones or others. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, thank you so much, and thank you. You, you such an inspiration. Thank you. So you much are everyone. too. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.